Hi, God bless you. This is Pastors Gary and Rhonda Petzold with Lily Band Psalmist Ministry. And God bless you. Well, recently we started out with an email that we sent out that had something with the question of, do you have a testimony to share? The Lord's put it on our heart to hear the testimonies of His children and what they have come from, been through, and what God has done for them in their lives. And it don't have to be something that God has done specifically through the work of this ministry. It can be something that God did for you apart from this ministry because He gets glorified in all of His work. It's not about Gary and Rhonda. It's about Jesus Christ, <laughs> who's Lord of Amen. all. Amen. There's nothing greater than the name of Jesus Christ. I don't name care what you're going through what you've been through, my God, Yahweh, can pull you up and out of that pit. And I'm going to show you that scripture in a minute. And it's going to be an exciting testimony that we have to share. And uh, yes, the Lord is bringing us awesome testimonies yes. and shining his light Amen. upon these awesome testimonies. You know, the Lord is awesome. He can do anything. Yeah, tell anything. me what's impossible with God. <laughs> Nothing. Tell me what's Nothing. impossible with God. Nothing. Tell me what's impossible with God. Tell me what's impossible with God. Nothing is impossible nope. with God. And he has us bringing these testimonies to publish them throughout the nations, just proving that our God is real. Amen. Proving our God is love and proving our God is almighty. Amen. And he is the truth. And we're bringing you the truth in his love and just you know, I mean, these are these are not just stories. Mm -mm. These are these not are exaggerated real, stories. Real these things. are real, yep. true to life people. Yes, giving confession of actual miracle signs and wonders that the Holy Father, their God, has done for them. Some of them is about salvation, deliverance from drugs, deliverance from demons, <laughs> alcohol. Serious. Glory to God! You got to hear these. Amen. 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 Well, let's get into this. So, this one testimony come from uh, it's Pastor James. And he's from Arlington, Texas. And uh, good Lord willing, uh, we can have him here on the set with us and we can interview him in person Hallelujah. because it would be a mighty testimony to hear and to see it. Uh, but this is uh, his testimony and I'll put it up on the site at Jesus Generation TV. So as I read this, you can read it too on the site yeah. if you want to after he's, we get done. Uh, he's been... Uh corresponding with us for yeah. several Se years. Several years now. Uh, we don't know him personally, uh, but he has sent us emails and encouraged us along the way. God bless you, James, for doing that. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you for God your encouragement. You and your whole congregation. Amen. 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 And, uh, you know, he says that he's been following us for, uh, I guess, several years. And I think one of his emails, I remember you, James, you said um, that it's like you've grown with us. You know, you've seen this ministry go from what God started with a little part. And, he, you know, he's bringing increase. He gets all the glory in this matter. And it's 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 going to be great. It is great because he's involved in it. Amen. Amen. You ready? Sowing, watering, and reaping. The Lord Amen. has the increase. The Lord the gives, the increase. gives the increase. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, all right, here it is. Now, I'm, I believe some of you listening to this testimony are going to identify with this. And, and we want uh, you to share these. Amen. I mean, you're, you're commanded to spread the gospel. It, you don't have to be a preacher amen. or a minister to spread the gospel. You've got Facebook. You've got YouTube. You've got your telephone. You've <laughs> got texting. You've got messaging. Get these testimonies going around the world. Amen. 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 The amen. Lord said, amen. go. Go. Amen. Amen. Okay, hey, I want to start with scripture. I better get there first. So let's go to the scripture here. I want to show you Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard oh, my, my cry. God. That's a lot of encouragement right there to begin with. He hears us. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Yes. Praise to our God, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Many will see it and fear and, and will, will trust, trust in, in the Lord. Lord. Now, you see, that that is the reason for what a testimony is. The testimony is so that many will see and fear and know to come to the Lord. And that is why you need to share you need to share. And plus, there's power in the testimony. Oh, yeah. Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Power in the blood. And by the, the word, word of, of their, their testimony. testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Okay? So that is so powerful about what it is about. The testimony, it is a delivering 
powerful testimony for you. And God gets all the glory for it. Amen. 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 And you know, part of salvation, honey, is that we, when we get saved, we're to go out and tell people. Yes. That's part of salvation. Well, the woman at the well, what did she yeah. do? She and, went and told. Yeah. And part of salvation is also being baptized in water. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay. So he's from Arlington, Texas. And uh, he says, I grew up in a very dysfunctional home and my earliest memories are bloody fights between my parents littered with broken windows broken dishes and broken furniture my father abandoned us when i was four and the years that followed were filled with physical and emotional e abuse from a mother who was completely overwhelmed i grew up believing it was normal to live with fear and stress every day and I know what it feels like to carry wounds from rejection and betrayal. Well, you know, if you know, carrying wounds uh, from rejection and betrayal can lead into, you know, obviously unforgiveness. And we'll teach on this at some point in a series coming up about unforgiveness. And it's certainly unforgiveness. I mean, it can cause a lot of problems in a person's life. It can lead to a lot of works of the flesh which is listed in Galatians chapter 5, it I believe it is. It could also be an open door to demonic oppression. Yep. Or even if it's left alone long enough and embraced mm -hmm. and, and not dealt with at all, it could even go into demonic possession. Yep. And so, you know, uh, unforgiveness is a, is a big one. It's been a very big hindrance to people getting healed and delivered. And so, you know, unforgiveness in a person's life is a, is a major sin. And, uh, you know, none of us deserve to be forgiven we none of us deserve the grace and mercy of god but we desperately need it and we amen. desperately need to share it amen. because unless we forgive we cannot be forgiven amen i later acquired a stepdad whose biker nickname was outlaw he embraced me in a loving way and welcomed me into this world his world but he had no parenting skills so he taught me street skills i remember a fishing trip at eight years old, he distracted the clerk while I stole the ice and bait. We spent many hours in the pool hall where he taught me to hustle. Needless to say, I learned a lot of destructive habits at an early age. By 13, I was buying, selling, and using drugs as a lifestyle. By 15, I was well down the road to being an alcoholic. Uh, at 15, I left home and survived on my own even eating food out of the trash dumpster for a season. Mm -hmm. That same year, I went to jail for the first time, which became a reoccurring theme. Anger was a controlling force, and I found myself in and out of trouble and in and out of the courtrooms. There was always a trail of one-night stands and broken relationships behind me. I tested the boundaries of reckless behavior daily, mm -hmm. including an insane amount of drug use and it's amazing that i survived those dark years i was a slave to so many things chain smoking cigarettes and almost drinking myself to death many times and on occasion even sharing dirty needles with other lost souls now this is definitely someone brother james you you went through some things and the lord we're getting to the good part here but the lord has brought you through it Oh my, and I he says, I know how it feels to hurt so bad and feel so hopeless that you want to end your life. This is speaking to somebody right now. Mm -hmm. That you have felt so bad, you have felt so hopeless that you even wanted to end your life and the thought of suicide has been upon your brain and you've been meditating on it. Stop it. You don't want to go. You need there. to stop it There's right hope. now. You need to stop it. You need to There's hear this testimony and how the power and the blood of Jesus Christ and this testimony is going to deliver you In the right name now. Of Jesus. It is amazing what God's going to do with this. Amen. He says, I know how it feels to hurt so bad and feel so hopeless that you want to end your life. And I came close to taking my own life a few times. Okay. I was always trying new things and looking for something that would fulfill me. New jobs, new hobbies, new adventures. I worked my way up to some decent positions, 
that were career worthy, but they never lasted because I was either too restless or would get into trouble. I once landed a suit and tie job, and even though the briefcase I carried to work made me look like I'd gotten somewhere, it was just a phony symbol of what my life was really like on the inside. Because the only thing I carried in the briefcase was a bottle of booze and a stack of porn magazines. Mm -hmm. Now, that that is, you know, in, in reality, how many times when people are hurting, they try to disguise their self and, and they try to hide it and they put on the outward appearance that everything's okay, but inwardly they are fractured and they are hurting and they are they uh, deliverance. needing deliverance. And this is really a, a real life example right here of what a lot of people are in this world today. Uh, you know, the, the harvest that's coming to this earth through the power of Jesus Christ is going to be one of the greatest harvests that's ever been. The greatest harvest that's ever been is coming here to the face of this earth In the name of because Jesus. he is not willing that anybody should perish. And God will show himself strong, I believe, in these end times. Yes, he is. And he will rise up through the remnant of his people yes, he to is. be bold and to love these people. You're going to have to love these people yes, because he is. you know what? This is the type of people here that what he was describing where he was at in that walk. You're going to have to love these people, not look at them with the judgmental nose or looking down your nose and saying that you're better than them and get away from me. You know, when God says to you by his spirit, now go minister to that person, we need to go. You know, we need to go. I, I just... Uh, and sharing testimonies yes. is an awesome way to do that. Yes. You know, I remember one time I was in Walmart and the way I minister is the way anyone should minister. And I think it's Holy Spirit led. You know, what does the Holy Spirit say to you concerning to do in a certain situation? I remember one time in Walmart, uh, there was a man in front of me that, that had a, uh, a tattoo on the back of his neck. And it was there actually. That was in, in Texas too, wasn't it? No, it was in Bradenton. Bradenton, Bradenton, Bradenton Florida, Florida okay. actually. And uh, he... He had told me, he said, he said, I asked him, I said, what's that tattoo about? And it was something about uh, fearing man. He was a part of a gang. He said it was a gang tattoo. And uh, I didn't know it then, but I found out that that <laughs> gang that he was with was a pretty tough gang, one of the yeah. deadly type gangs. And uh, I said, you know what? I said, the one you should fear is the one who has the power over your own soul that after you have died, he can cast you into hell if you don't know Jesus Christ. <laughs> And you, you know, I was out it, in the car when all it, this was going on. You know, it, it, and I that's, usually sit out there and pray. And uh, Gary came back out and told me what he did. I was just like, "Glory to God!" You know, you have to. There's my man. You have to walk in that kind of boldness, but you have to do it with compassion. You can't look down your nose like you have. You're you're better than them because Apostle Paul said we have to put upon this mind that was in Christ, which you know it's humility. That's right. We have to be clothed in humility. God resists the proud, but he'll give grace unto the humble people. So and humble he, yourself. He also said, if it wasn't for Christ, where would you be? <laughs> we all need grace. Woo. We all need grace. Every single one of us need grace. I don't even want to think about where I'd be. No, I don't either. I was either. a mess. I was a mess too. And I, I wasn't this kind of a mess here uh, in, in certain aspects, but I tell you, I was I was a mess myself, you know. So my goodness. And it would have only gotten worse because you can't get better until you get Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So continuing on, he, he says that, uh, you know, his life was, you know, uh, he was carrying the briefcase and he had that appearance of a successful person. But inside there was nothing but booze and porn magazines inside of his briefcase. He said, in one of those seasons, desperate for change, I joined the military. It was a great experience in many ways, but I often felt lonely. And I found that no matter where you go, you take your problems with you. Boy, that can be true. That really is true because, you know, you might think things change if you go from one uh, country to the next or go from one location to the next. Now, the atmospheres may change. The home may look different and things can look more beautiful where you are. But if your inside is still corrupted and fragmented and has not found Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then that, that really, truly has nothing changed. Because the most important thing that you can have changed in your life is your Salvation. spirit to be saved born and again. born again through Brand Jesus Christ. Start. Amen. And that your soul is surrendered to the work of his spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Making There's, him Lord. That means amen. he 
is the one in charge. He's he's the one in control. He's the one Amen. who leads you. He you you answer to him. He Amen. Thinks his way. And what a blessing follows. Glory to God. Amen. So he found out that no matter where he went, he would, you know, the problems was being taken with him. So he met an amazing woman and got married. Oh. But after two years, that too became a train wreck. By the spring of 1989, I was about to leave the military with nowhere to go in life. I was standing at a crowded bus stop and suddenly a guy in the crowd turned and said, well, as long as we have time on our hands, I might as well tell everyone about Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for the evangelist. He, amen. He preached to our bewildered faces for a few minutes and then started picking people out of the crowd cool. one at a time with pointed questions about heaven and hell. And without warning, he turned and looked into my eyes and peering deep into my broken soul, he said, what about you? Are you living for Jesus or not? So I'm going to ask that same question. With the power of this word right here in this testimony, I'm going to ask you too, what about Jesus? Are you really living for him or not? What Have you, you devoted your life to Jesus Christ or not? Are you a lukewarm Christian that's uh, doing worldly things or are you going to do what the Bible says, which is to be holy, to live holy and to be holy? Amen. You're going to have to understand that when Jesus is your Lord, if you've confessed that Jesus is your Lord, then you need to live a holy life. That's what you need to do. And you need to he, understand that, that only he can help you. To only he can help you to do that by his, by his grace through his spirit and by and, and, knowing his word. And and obeying it's, his amen. Word. And it's, it's not a uh, earning your way to heaven through your own holiness, your holiness and righteousness obtained to get to heaven is through Christ. But the yet, of Jesus and as obedience. I always say, he requires a walk of righteousness and obedience on our part here on this earth. And the more you obey, the more you'll be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. And Amen. I have a question. Who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say he is? Amen. That's a deep question. What else we got here, huh? All right, so he asked them, this... Uh, this guy that was preaching, the street preacher, asked him, what about you? Are you living for Jesus or not? Something happened to me in that moment, and I've never been the same. As filthy as my life was, I had always somehow convinced myself that God and I were on good terms. I'd had people drag me to church at various times over the years. I'd been to the altar in tears a few times. And I'd even been baptized in water and said the sinner's prayer. But I couldn't escape that bus stop preacher's words. <laughs> and I knew that I'd been lying to myself. Now, James 1.22, Be ye doers of the word, not the hearers only, deceiving your own self. You see, if, it's, uh, if you're not doing that word, you're deceiving your own self. That's very, very treacherous ground to be on because you can't, live a Christian life if you're not doing the Word of God. You know, if you're just hearing it, but you're not obeying it, and, and we're not walking it out, then deceiving our own self, and you can't do that. Because faith without works is dead, says the Lord. Right, and it's impossible to please the Lord God without, without faith. Without faith, it's, it's impossible. impossible to please Him. It's impossible. Whatever is not of faith is of sin. Amen. So he said, I, I couldn't es escape that bus stop preacher's words. And I knew that I'd been lying to myself. I suddenly knew that I couldn't escape God. <laughs> you know, David, the psalmist said that wherever I make my bed, there you're going to be. Whether heaven or hell, there you're going to be. He's everywhere. You know, you cannot escape God. Hmm. No matter where I tried to hide. After a few days, I reached a breaking point and said to my wife, I must find my God. <laughs> now, you see, he made it personal there. And it wasn't, I must find God. I must find my God. You know, it's Hallelujah. kind of like, you know, Apostle Paul made it personalized, right? When he was talking about the Philippian church that gave, you know, he said, now my God. It was a personal relationship level that uh, Apostle Paul walked on with the Lord. And Not just this any is God, my God. That's right. My and, holy uh, God, my it, Father God. In Hebrew, you know, so, some people call him Jehovah, Jehovah, Yahweh, uh, different, different names in the Hebrew that uh, relate Shaddai. to him. 
uh, many different names, uh, the attributes of his names too. Oh boy, it. you can go through, you know, okay, I won't get off the, the, the wrong <laughs> trail here, but you know, you can go through, you know, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. What an amazing God we serve. Just learn his names. Why do you need to learn his names? Because, because there's power. Go into Psalm 91. What does Psalm 91 say? It He's says, because, character. because you have known my name, you will be delivered. God will deliver you because you have known his name. If you know somebody's name, you know them in a sense of a personal way. You know that. Hey, you know that, something about that. that, that per, that's that's my Elohim, God. That's That's Yahweh. So he said after he said, I must find my God, I started surrendering myself to Jesus Christ. And the more I let go of filthy things, the more free I felt. He took a heart covered in wounds and healed it to the point that I was able to forgive the people who inflicted the worst damage. Glory to God. He healed my marriage and 30 years later, we're more in love than ever. <laughs> so He's beautiful. given me a deep peace about the past, the present and my future. He forgave my guilt, removed the darkness from my life, and made me feel clean inside. I tried repeatedly to walk away from my addictions, but failed miserably. Until he used his strength to free me, I draw a very real and active strength every day from his presence. I was freed from fear, anger, and racism. He's given me hope that benefits me today, tomorrow, and beyond the grave for all eternity. He's taught me how to love and be loved. He taught me the joy of being a sacrificial giver. And I've been empowered with the privilege of using my past to help heal others. There you go. It's Psalm, what we started out with in the Psalms. That the song that God gives us to sing, that new song that he gives us to sing, is the song that people will hear of our testimony, that they will see and song fear that know that he is he the Lord. Is he is good and he Put is a deliverer. Trust in him. For all that call upon the name of Jehovah Yahweh shall be delivered. <laughs> what a name. All. Glory. All. All. That's what it is. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. He's taught me how to love and be loved. He taught me the joy of being a sacrificial giver, and I've been empowered with the privilege of using my past to help heal others. I've lived an unusually full life, tasting all that the world has to offer. And I can tell you, James says, <laughs> with authority and confidence that nothing is more satisfying than the presence of God himself. Say that out with him. Come on, <laughs> say it. I challenge you. Nothing is more satisfying than the presence of God himself. I've traveled the world to 17 different countries and the desperation of humanity is the same everywhere you go. I've owned four businesses, including a successful invention, but the silver and gold are worthless if you're empty inside. I've been to the best parties, had plenty of cash, owned cool toys like boats and motorcycles, but without Christ, it's all empty. I've experienced college, law enforcement, emergency medicine, and martial arts. I earned trophies in boxing, sword fighting, photography, and woodworking. I can play the guitar, forge steel, write computer code, and I once pedaled a mountain bike 100 miles. But none of these things made me complete or made me a better person inside. Everything I've owned and everything I've done outside of Jesus Christ was a waste <laughs> of time. Hallelujah. And I consider it all Ooh, garbage compared truth. to having more of him. That's the truth. That's like Apostle Paul said, <laughs> I consider it all dumb. Yep. He said, I just, I, it's, it's everything that I've yep. learned before. You know, I, I, I'm coming to you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know nothing but the cross and Jesus Christ himself. Come on. That's Christ what we need to preach. Crucified. I mean, that that's the gospel message, the power of the cross. And it's not just at the cross now. Come on. It's his resurrection power. He's no longer at the cross. Where's He's Jesus glorified. at? He's, He's high and lifted up. <laughs> Well, when does this Holy Spirit power come? It came on the day of Pentecost and is available to all those who call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and the Holy Spirit will come in and dwell inside of you and will remove the old and bring in the new. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5.17, all that are in Christ are a new creation and everything of old has passed away. Your spirit can become brand new when you accept Jesus Christ into your life. That's powerful. So he says the last 25 years have not been perfect, but they have been perfectly amazing. <laughs> In a strange way, I'm grateful for the years of hardship because they made me desperate enough to run to God. Wow. But your life doesn't have to be as desperate as mine was to see your need for God's wisdom and power. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that the world is a lost place. Jesus has loved me and given me the privilege of loving him back which is beyond words. He has given my life purpose and joy. I wake up every day to feel his breath on my life one more time, just to hear his voice one more time, to know his presence one more time, and it fulfills me in a way that cannot be understood unless you experience it yourself. Glory. I have found the meaning of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then Jesus said, come to me. All of you who are tired and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Glory to God. What a testimony. Pastor James, God has done a work in your life. I tell you, that's, that, is, that is powerful. What a testimony. Yes. I, I, that's the first time I got to hear it. Yeah, I didn't read that's it That's the first before, time we've got to learn who before, he really was and what, uh, what he'd been through. Before right now, and I'm just just so grateful. Glory to God. And you know, you can be delivered just like that. You can be delivered by calling out upon the name of Jehovah or Jesus Christ and say, I want to know you. I want to know you personally. Come into my life. Come into my heart. I accept you. You know, and that that when you do that, Christ will answer. <laughs> he takes that very seriously and he answers. He answers. Really quick. Yes. Amen. So if this has touched your life today, which I know it has because God's word is anointed and these testimonies are anointed, yes, are. please contact us. Let us know. If you have a testimony of what Jesus has done for you, please yeah. submit them. Uh, there will be a contact form at JesusGeneration.tv that you can put yours in. And uh, good Lord willing, we can read it and put it out and let others hear it too. Hallelujah. Yes. And if you're out there and you, you need a church family, you need a church or a pastor, yes. you know, and you just can't seem to find the church that is right for you, or maybe there's just no churches around where you are, we welcome you to become Amen. a part of our fellowship. We Amen. welcome you to write in and let us know about you. Give us your name and your address and your prayer request. Tell us some things about your life, your family, your testimony, or, or what you know you need. Maybe you don't even know Jesus yet and you want to know Jesus. And I know this testimony here of brother james has blessed you uh it, it has to because it's the word of god with it oh, and it's yeah. the testimony of his power and his grace we all need his grace don't we say yes, amen we amen we yes, all we need do. it we, yes, we every do. one of us need well, it we appreciate you listening we appreciate you sharing this message amen. and we appreciate you keeping this ministry in your prayers and for supporting Click the share button and share this testimony with others because you know what? There are those who will be in your news feed list on a Facebook or whether it be YouTube or wherever it is and social platform that needs to see this. Send and it, it will bless them. It Go will ahead. help them. It will encourage them. It will edify them all for the glory of Jesus Go Christ. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, the Lord said. Amen. This is the good news. This is the news that, that lets people know they can be set free too. You know, their life may not be in as much as trouble as James's was, but if God can set James free from all that, look at what he could do for other people Amen. too. And God's no respecter of persons. You know, uh, I mean, he, he went through some stuff. And glory to God. He's God's even made him a pastor. That's just so awesome. Yes, amen. Glory amen. to God. Amen, amen. And God we love you. you all in the Lord. Let us hear from you. Amen. Let us hear from you. Glory to God. Amen. Take some time right now to let us hear from you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. be blessed. Be blessed. If the Lord Jesus is leading you to be a monthly financial partner of this ministry, God bless you. You're going to be blessed for being a part of this. Uh, he's doing a great work here. And we certainly do appreciate and we do need your support as the Lord leads you to give. We appreciate it. And you can do that securely at lilybandmusic.com.